In this exercise, we want to find some enzyme parameters. So we have an enzyme reaction that converts a substrate into a product. And we are particularly interested in Vmax and Km. And to get these data, we measure initial rates at a, a variety of substrate concentrations. And here are our measurements. So here we have the substrate concentration and the corresponding initial rates. So first of all, let's have a look whether this enzyme actually follows a michaelis menten uh, behavior. So I highlight the cells like that. Then go to insert. We look at a chart, at a scatter plot, and that looks pretty much like a normal michaelis menten plot. However, as you probably uh, see, we have the problem that we cannot prop properly determine a Vmax because we are still going on the increase here and we can't do a defined value for Vmax. So a Michaelis Menten plot in this case is not a very good plot that would help us uh, here to define Vmax. And if we can't define Vmax, we cannot find Km as well. So therefore, we can use a different plot, a different linearized linearization. And my preferred one is an Edi Hofstede plot. And in order to do an Edi Hofstede plot, we uh, plot as a reminder for an Edi Hofstede plot, we plot V over S versus the initial rates, we would get hopefully a straight line. Now the intercept here that would determine our Vmax and the gradient of this uh, graph would be negative Km. And uh, this x intercept here, this would indicate Vmax over Km. So these are the parameters. And now we can plot this. So for the x-axis, we use V over S, V over the substrate concentration. For the y-axis, we use just simply the initial rates. And we let Excel do all the heavy lifting of the calculations. So we've got equals, well, initial rate divided by the substrate concentration here. And for the rate on the y-axis, I just simply take this value here that we have here. So I've got my first pair here. And now I just highlight the cells, go down to the black cross, and with the left mouse button pressed, drag it down, and I get the autofill of Excel to do the plot. Now, let's see what this plot looks like. So I highlight the cells. We go to insert again, chart, and do the proper chart here for this. So what we see is that looks pretty good. That looks pretty much like a straight line. And we can also take the measurements for a straight line. So we can fit a trend line or line of best fit. To do so, we do a right mouse click on one of the data points and go to add trend line. So we will get a new pane here. And we can say we display the equation and we also check the R square value. The R square value tells us how good the fit is. We get an R square value of one, which means we have an almost perfect fit. And we've got our uh, equation for the straight line. Let's quickly uh, label the axes here. So here on the axis, we have V over S. And that would be as micromolar per minute. That is our V 
divided by the substrate concentration that was in micromolar. And for the y-axis, we have the rate here, and that was micromolar per minute. And of course, what we see here is a typical Edi-Hofstad plot. Edi-Hofstad plot. And uh, we can directly read from the ed Hofstad plot the gradient. So the gradient, our minus Km equals minus 11.0. And that would be micromolar because that is always the same concentration as the substrate here. And for the y-intercept here, if we would extend that, we get this value of roughly Vmax equals 55.3. And we had micromolar per minute as the unit. So this is how we can determine the enzyme parameters uh, from this enzyme reaction. We do not use a Michaelis-Menten plot. We use an Eddie Hofstede plot. And we can do a sort of a reality check. We can say, right, we have a Vmax. And uh, that would be 55. And we know that Km is the substrate concentration that would give us half of Vmax. So half of Vmax, 55.3. Half of Vmax is roughly around 27.6 or so. So 27. Um, uh, half of Vmax, we would be in this range here. And the corresponding substrate concentration would be somewhere between 10 and 20, probably closer to 10 micromolar. So we know that our Km, which of course is a, always a positive value, Km of roughly 11 micromolar is not an unrealistic value that we've determined. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.